So today I'm going to review the Desmond DCF 432 carbon fiber tripod and the Sairui K30X bought it. Okay, so I previously did a video of the three leg things that I received in the mail and it was a an initial impressions video. So in the in that you saw some of the issues that I ran into with it. Um, it, it probably it was likely just the model that I got and just that one unit and I don't think it's a quality control issue by any stretch with uh, three leg things and uh, you know they, they, they contacted me and and tried to make it right but at that point I had already ordered the setup you see here all right so I just looked online I wanted to get something around the same price point I ended up kind of doubling up on it so I spent more than I intended to the legs costs roughly as much as the uh, three leg things did that I purchased. Now, what would have been nice is if I've got another set of three leg things uh, legs and then a ball head of my choice. If, if that was a, an option for all of their tripod legs, I probably would have gone that route initially and not run into some of the, the dislikes that I had on it. So, Truth be told, this is overkill. This is more than I expected. I didn't look at the specs thoroughly, and this is much bigger than I wanted. I wanted a compact tripod, so I have another one on the way that's much smaller. And I intend to keep this too, because here where I live, it's really windy, so I'm gonna need this guy. Um, so now I have a total of four tripods, two full size and two compacts. Uh, if you're not counting tabletops, so uh, let, let's get into it. Here's what came with the tripod. The eight ply carbon fiber tripod legs, a short metal column, the warranty card in Chinese and in English, instructions and warranty, four Allen wrenches, and of course the generic carrying case. The K30X ball head, 44 millimeter ball head. Um, here you have the tensioning knob, two levels, a safety release button, the plate obviously, a D-ring tightener, not going anywhere okay so this can slide in two ways uh, the wrong way that's going to cover up your bubble level and that is also going to be with the Sairui facing uh, away from you if the Sairui is facing you you'll be able to see your bubble level okay so the tensioning knob here has about 10 11 dials that's its loosest setting uh, free moving now just tightening up just until it starts to give a bit of friction here. I'm trying to pull back on it and it's taking quite a bit of force. So uh, most, most setups should be able to hold with ease. This is, uh, I'm, I'm really, so you have a uh, 360 degree panel, uh, 15 degree increments. It's, uh, it's fairly smooth. It's a lot easier with the camera on it, obviously. Uh, just trying to hold it, it, it was not that easy. You have a, a friction knob for the ball. Um, this little guy, it, it's it's tough to explain that one, but I'm not a fan of it. It's supposed to, I guess, make the ball head move a little firmer, uh, even when the tension or the tension knob is set to its looser settings. Uh, yeah, it's been more of a headache messing with that thing, so I just leave it out and tighten the tension knob. Pretty smooth uh, opening and closing of the uh, for the plate there. It slides in and, and locks into place so it's not going to go anywhere. Now, remember, if the Sairui is facing away from you, that little uh, bar on the plate is going to cover up your... Um, bubble level. Okay, so now that you've kind of got a better look at all the items that I have, um, 
the setup that I prefer is the shorter center column vice the longer one. Uh, the, the only drawback to using the setup like this is that because I bought a much larger tripod head than I should have, if I would have gone with the K20X, I may not have run into this issue. And uh, it's when I fold the, uh, the tripod legs. So let me just take this off. So when you fold the tripod legs, and I might get lucky and actually have this guy work out in my favor. Nope. Oh. Yeah, so if you look closely here, the legs don't close evenly, and that's just, you know, because of the bulk of the head. Um, if it wasn't, if, if I would have gone with the smaller head, I think it, it closed up a lot better, and um, I, I'd keep it this way, because for me, the, uh, the max height with the shorter column is more than enough for myself, plus the height of the camera. So. Um, the tripod itself folded is 21, 21 inches and then um, so the tripod itself when folded like this is 21 inches or 53.3 centimeters fully extended with the short column it's um, let me check my spec 59.6 inches or 151 centimeters, 151.5 centimeters. With the center column, the, the larger center column, it's a maximum of 72 inches and 183 centimeters. Um, the lar well, either one is in is invertible, so um, you can take the camera under underneath. And uh, take your macro shots that way. The, so the lowest height with that, hmm, I have to look it up. I guess I didn't write that down. So the the lowest height with the legs in their most open position is going to be. What am I doing wrong here? Um, eight and a half inches or. 21.6 centimeters. Oh, that's why I was using the wrong. And then uh, that's it right there. So as you can see, for macro, that's a uh, that's not a bad height to be at, as long as you have enough room to accommodate the legs where they're at. Uh, I have a tabletop tripod just in case that doesn't work out. But if I'm outdoors, then this is more. This is perfect. For macro outdoors. Um, the max load rating on the legs is 55 pounds or 25 kilos. Now for the K30X ball head. It's a 44 millimeter ball head, 360 degree pano, 90 degree tilt, single knot. It's a quarter 20 thread underneath. The height is 4.41 inches or 11.2 centimeters. The weight of the ball head itself with the, the plate is 1.1 pounds or a half kilo. You have two bubble, you have two bubble levels and you have three knobs and one button if you want to count it. You have your pan knob, you have your knob for the plate, you have your safety release for the plate, and then you have this kind of two-in-one uh, knob here. So this is going to be your tension on the knob for the ball head and then this smaller screw is the friction of the ball head. Okay so this this thing I, don't, I just do not like messing with this because 
I won't say it doesn't serve a purpose, but it's not that noticeable. Okay, so right now I have it set at number five with the little um, ball lock um, all the way out. And this is the movement of the tripod. Just to give it some uh, perspective, I'm gonna put the camera on it. So this is the 5D Mark III with the, macro, the 100 Macro 28IS. So, let me get this at the right angle. Okay, so I cannot just let this thing go, right? Now let me see if I tighten this. So if that's all that's gonna go, you still really don't have much, uh, much friction. It doesn't change. Now, if I take it to number, let's say eight, now this is the movement of the ball head itself, you know, tensioned at eight. With this, wherever it was, now I can screw it down a little bit more. And quite honestly, the difference, it's almost not even noticeable. So um, if you get this ball head, I, I would not recommend that you purchase it because it has that feature. I mean, it's nice to have, but for me, it, it's not that important. It has a safety lock, so I can loosen that. Oh. So here's the problem. If you start messing with this thing, you can only loosen it so much. So now I can take it all the way, right? Now you see that? I could have just lost the camera right there if this did not have a safety lock because I was not anticipating the uh, friction. So if uh, if it didn't have the safety lock, it would have just boom gone, and that would have been a uh, really bad uh, occurrence on video. Okay, so you have three leg positions. This is position one. Position two would have put it somewhere around here. And I'm sorry that I don't have a table wide enough for it. And then position three is going to be um, nearly flat. Like so. All right, here's a look at the uh, collar there without the uh, column inserted. It, it's pretty free spinning. And when you lock it up, it, it, it grabs pretty well. Um, I'll show that here in a, in a second. So in here, that uh, you'll, see, you'll see a little notch. It's out of focus, but there's a little notch there. That's uh, to allow for that center column there to slide in and guide it so it only goes in one way and it's not going to spin around on you. And this is just uh, seeing it inverted the the panning on it relatively smooth here i was just uh so what i was doing there was just pulling down um, to show how tight the uh collar would grab but uh that was out of the video And here I'm just going to do a uh, quick replacement of the center column there. And grab the short one and put it in. Now, if when you use this one, well, actually, I, yeah, actually, when you use this one, you need to lock down the collar. Otherwise, you won't be able to tighten it since everything's just going to be free spinning. Um, I, I realize that here in a, in a minute, it just spins and spins and spins. It's, oh, yeah, you got to lock up the collar first, guy. All right, see how much better that was? Now we're getting somewhere. 
All right, so now we're going to turn this baby into a monopod since that's uh, an added bonus of this thing. It ha all, all three legs have a built-in spike with the rubber cover. As you can see, it's uh, pretty difficult to get off. So, I mean, it's, it's on there nice, snug, and secure. Um, this is the carbon fiber center column. Notice the notch here. That helps it line up in the when you put it in the collar. The rubber O-ring acts as a uh, cushion for stopping it all the way down, or when it drops all the way down, I should say. Um, your base plate, 3 8 screw that's reversible for a quarter inch as well. And pretty straightforward, just screw it on. Now this, this is actually pretty light. Uh, obviously, it's, it's since it's all carbon fiber. Um, but notice how, how low the foam grip is. I prefer the smaller uh, metal collar column that comes with it. Uh, for, my, for my use, it just works out better for me. And the foam grip is much higher or more, much closer to the, uh, to the camera. So y you have that grip. Now that was actually I'm going to tighten this down what I as tight as I can and let's see it takes a lot for me to get it to move um, now I could have tightened it down a lot harder and it may not have budged but if you're putting that kind of weight on this thing on a regular basis, then yeah, don't expect it to last very long. But I mean, that was a a lot of weight because I'm not a light person. I'm not gonna say how much I weigh, but I'm not light, and all that force down, it, it took a lot to get this to start to want to collapse. Um, but. You know, either way, I think this is uh, this is more than enough. You see that this that's actually pro that's obviously too high for me. I don't need that. Now, if I wanted more stable surface, I have this uh, up against the uh, the wall. Let me lighten that up. And now. Too much going on at once. I, it's so hard to, you know, I can I can take my shot, and I have a good balanced point here, and I can just pan and tilt, pan and tilt if I need to. But I might as well be using a tripod if I'm going to use it like that. It's just not the uh, the most efficient. And now, where I where I had it set before. It's now, you know, just right below my chest, so I can probably fully extend this. No, and I'm still not where I need to be. And why does this just spin? Okay. So this is fully extended. Now I have a little more. Oh, now I have uh, less adjustments I I need to make for myself because this uh, with the shorter column allow it's not excessive uh, now if you're six foot and above then yeah you might want to use this but I wasn't blessed and or cursed with that much height so um, this just happens to work out for me and it also puts the foam grip closer to me um, which, or closer to the top, I should say, which you don't get if you're using this, it's gonna be much lower. So unless you're, you know, two fists in it, you're gonna to have to have one hand down low, one up high. So whatever works for you, but again, having that, that option, it's, it's a good thing to have. Uh, I'm gonna keep the center column in there. Uh, one thing I will mention is that this column here has a, uh, a groove, so it only goes in here one way. 
and it's going to prevent this from sliding around on you. So, boom. And I'm not going to be able to twist that. Now, obviously, it's not going to shake when you tighten this, but. One thing I will say is that do not over tighten this on the shorter column. Nina, why? Well, I was going to <laughs> take this thing apart and put the uh, larger column on it prior to starting the video and I had a hell of a time trying to get this thing loose because there is almost no, there's no grip space for you to grab this, there's no grip space. So I'm over here trying to pinch this and loosen it and it's just not happening. So this is what it looks like um, with the legs collapsed. This is what it looks like with the middle legs extended. And this is fully extended. Uh, I'm gonna keep the center column in there. Uh, one thing I will mention is that this column here has a, uh, a groove, so it only goes in here one way. And it's going to prevent this from sliding around on you. So, boom. And I'm not going to be able to twist that. Now, obviously, it's not going to shake when you tighten this, but. One thing I will say is that do not over tighten this on the shorter column. Nina, why? Well, I was going to <laughs> take this thing apart and put the uh, larger column on it prior to starting the video and I had a hell of a time trying to get this thing loose because there is almost no, there's no grip space for you to grab this. There's no grip space. So I'm over here trying to pinch this and loosen it and it's just not happening. Okay, so I've got the two back legs fully extended and the monopod leg just slightly extended enough. And I mean, if you take a look at it, that, that's kind of where you're gonna be at with the shorter column there. So overall, initial impressions of this, it's a solid tripod so far. Um, seems very well built. The, uh, I, I tightened down the little Allen screws here because I, when I had the, tri the, uh, the, the head on it and the larger center column and I had it folded um, to its smallest folding position, I, I held it from uh, from the phone grip and when I would uh, just walk around with it it would start to open up because when you there's no locking position this way it's just free free moving until you hit its most open if you heard that click position right so when I would hold it it would start to just open up slightly but now, um, since I tightened it up a lot, when, when I do grip it, 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 the weight doesn't force the leg to want to just open up again. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the purchase thus far. Um, I, I can't blame Desmond for my inability to uh, research it the way I should have. And uh, yeah, it's, it's much more than I needed. This is really big uh, or a lot taller than, than I wanted or than I was thinking and the ball head quite honestly it's overkill and I don't know if I should return it for something smaller to be quite honest with you but uh, I, th I think I'm gonna stick stick with it because I have another one on the way the, the Dolcia something rather I, I I don't know I'll do a review on it when I get it but I mean it's a lot smaller uh, so it's good to have the, uh, the flexibility to grab one and go. Um, 
this one I'll, I'll use when it's outdoors and it's windy or uh, when I think I'm really going to need it. I, I'm pretty sure I will be um, happy with either one and they'll both serve their purpose as well. And um, to this setup and quite honestly if you're already w walking around with something of this size then um, adding that little bit more it shouldn't be too much. Now what I would do for traveling with this guy I, I would take the ball head off entirely and just keep it in its little pouch and keep it in my bag somewhere and keep the legs apart. This is also my probably heaviest setup but whether whether I have the 35L or the 100 macro this with this ball head it, it's more than enough and uh, if I add one of the LED lights, I don't think it's going to be overkill. If I add an LED light and my microphone and and my tablet that I use as my monitor, um, I, I, I still think that this is going to hold. So if you like this review, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. The, the tripods on the way. I'm going to be reviewing the newer or newer CN216 LED lights, two of which I'm using right now. And if you've been watching this video for its entire duration, you'll notice that the lights have gotten dimmer. That's because I'm using all AA batteries and uh, I've been filming quite a bit and they're starting to lose their, uh, lose their juice. So the lights are slowly getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. They're not as bright as they were. But um, yeah, I've got a, quite a few reviews on the way, so stick around. Thanks.